well, I was 47 and I wanted to race a car and, and I went and bought a, bought, bought a car and, um, and started doing it. It moved on from there. Um, I went south and bought the, the um, ex Rod Coppins Camaro. When Central was formed, I ran with them for, um, I think it was two seasons, and then the rules got stiffer, the car was sort of out of the, out of the square a bit. So then I went to um, Auckland and, and purchased the um, Commodore off the McLean um, family, and, and I've raced the Commodore ever, ever since with Central. So um, I've had a pretty good stint in the old Commodore, and. Um, and done quite a few meetings in it now, you know, we're up to about 80 meetings in, in, in the Central all up and um, in the Commodore and it's been a good old car. You know, the car's been around a while, you know, it's, it's, it's on its fourth logbook at the moment. Um, there's not too many cars in New Zealand that have filled four logbooks or near enough to four logbooks. So um, from the time that Trevor McLean and, um, and Kempe built the car to go to Bathurst in 85, um, it's done, done quite a, a bit of racing and, and over the years quite a few guys have um, had a pedal in it. And back in the day, um, Ray Williams, they, they did a six hour and I think they won a six hour here at Pookie and, um, and they tell me that um, one of the Stone brothers had a, a stint in it with McLean um, one time and the Anderson family um, uh, leased it for Andrew at the age of 18 to do the Wellington Street race in it, so it's been around quite a while and it's been a good old car to me too. Um, it's a little bit down on horsepower now with the way things have gone in, in the central muscle car class, but I just go out there and enjoy pedalling it around and, and trying to take it to the ones that I can't beat and, and try and keep out the ones that, um, that are at my pace, so um, it's been interesting and over the 18 years I've been with Central, um, you know, I've seen a lot of people come and go, but um, at this meeting I'm, I'm the oldest member here, um, done the most meetings out of any member since Central was formed, and, and Central was formed um, back in, in 2003 with um, Steve Hildred um, from up the Taranaki, he, he, he um, originally um, got this group together, he, he got a handful of us at the, the Whitakers Classic one year and said there's five muscle cars here, how about we get together and we and we get a muscle car group going? So um, I put my hand up, and five others, I think, at that time, put their hand up. So it, it evaluated from there. So through the years, we've um, seen Central with some good years, bad years, and the group has had highs and lows. We've had years without sponsorship. We've had years with sponsorship. So all in all. Um, to come here and this season started off very strong with 30 plus cars on the grid at Manfield and 29 here and it's exciting as getting an older person in the group seeing that the group is getting better and better and better and um, it, it's, a, it's a draw card to a lot of people that are getting a bit older now and they've been here and done that so they, they get a muscle car and think we'll tail out a motor racing um, thing and if they hang around as long as me because I started my ra motor racing when I was 47 years of age it's just been enjoyable and the people you've met in this group and the people you get on with there's been a few dicks over the years but we got rid of them um, so it's all good the most important thing with the cars that we're racing is to be be aware of the people that are around you um, the way they drive and and um, you know, there's some people that put their helmet on and turn their brain off. Well, you get to know those people. And, and, um, and you know, I mean, over, over the years, um, I've had the old duff and I've had the old been bashed into and, and things like that. But um, um, it's pretty good that you get out there and it gets pretty pretty angry out there. And um, even last year, I was, I was pretty fortunate. Last year, I got, I got the trophy for no panel damage or touching anybody. So um, that was a, a personal achievement too. Um, because it gets pretty um, wild out there with um, some of the hard charges and the reverse grid races coming through. And you just got to keep your wits about um, what's happening around you and, and um, try and read ahead. But the time that you can't do that, it's time to give up. Um, because you're just a menace, you're a menace out there to, to these younger guys that are, that are driving expensive fast cars. Being an original Group A car, um, to keep the value in them, you, if you shift the goalposts and, and put a, a, a Chevrolet or an LS motor in them, the car probably is worth nothing because you start bastardizing, bastardizing a, an original Group A, an old Group A car. It's been, um, originally the, the car was um, a, v, a VK Commodore and as time went on, um, 
it had a VL front put on it. But to turn it back to the way that that car ran at Bathurst, um, you turn it back to a VK look and, and that. So I've always run with a 38 Holden motor. Alan Kemp bought the car brand new for his wife and they decided we're going to build a, a race car. So Alan Kemp bought out all the Harrop running gear out of um, Australia. And in those days, I think that cost him about 22,000. So he chucked the car in and he was promised a, um, to be the co-driver at Bathurst. But in those days, another guy came along with two brand new gearboxes, so he got the co-drive. So yeah, there's a bit of um, history in that there. And Kempy always comes along and sees me, I still own that car, Boyden. He goes, I've never been paid a cent for that car. <laughs> Trevor McLean did a lot of racing in this from Mobile 500s and Wellington Street races in it and um, back in that era. And, um, and so it still goes on. And there wouldn't be um, too many cars in New Zealand from 85 that are still racing and there wouldn't be too many cars in New Zealand that have filled as many logbooks as, as this car. Um, we see a lot of cars come and go and, and they'll be around for two or three years or, or five years or something and then they disappear off the, off the scene. So that old baby's been around a long time now. And the reason I probably stuck with it at times, I thought, well, why am I still you know, trying to keep this um, old baby on the track? And it's a lot of hard work because um, everything's getting old and, and, and things get worn out. And, and to get the componentry now, for it's hard work um, getting it out of Harrop in Australia because they don't make that sort of stuff anymore. You know, I mean, they've moved on, and I'm, I'm getting too old now to build another car. I'd love to build another car, but if you want to keep up with the Joneses, you've got to spend a lot of money. I've been there and done that. I've done it all by myself for 20 years now without any sponsorship at all. And the only way you can do it, if you haven't got a lot of money, is through hard work. And you've got to um, put your head down and ass up, and I've probably done 80% of the meetings by myself. And, but I do all the work at home, uh, so you don't have to put a spanner on the car at the racetrack unless, unless something breaks or somebody runs into you. Um, so um, I just like coming and getting it out of the truck and racing, and if anything goes wrong, I just put it back in the truck. I can't be bothered crawling underneath and fixing anything because it's, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. But it's all right if you've got a heap of young, young guys around that are keen to buckle in and rip a gearbox out of a rip motor, and that's the way it is now. So the cars are made a lot simpler today, so that can be done quick. Um, you know, I mean, to get the gearbox out of this old baby, it's a mission. You know, it, it'd probably be next weekend. If there's a meeting here next week, I might be able to front up on the grid, you know. <laughs>